It's okay. It's all right. I don't think the kids are watching yet. Yeah, Lantern's off screen right now. Yeah. So after the battle, you get a manual. And originally, you were going to be able to read it. I scrapped that idea. But we can look at the manual now. Oh, we on have stream. Some, oh yeah, let's take a look at that. Got some concept art for the manual here. Using the power of technology. <laughs> Incredible. Well, you need some kind of word processing technology to really put Temi together. Temi actually manuals. recreated this manual in real life. Next page, please. <laughs> Grasse is very matter-of-fact about it. Yeah. Yeah, it was good, but... It just felt wrong. So... Don't take it seriously. Next page. Let's keep it going. <laughs> so you got all the abilities of the game. This might be canon. Not sure. <laughs> well, yeah. Rase does cite his source there. So that makes me feel more confident about it. I did put a talk function into the game. Kind of like the cell phone. But I decided. That's too much text, bro. It'd be a lot of work. Yeah, the characters are... Not only that, but it also messes with pacing. And the, and the characters already kind of talk at like every moment in the game, like when they're equipping things, um, it, during battles, like dialogue boxes inside of dialogue boxes. So there are a lot of Next. opportunities there. I appreciated that lovingly de designed door. Yeah. Possibly yeah, the most things, rendered thing in the even game. Even if you equip something to they someone that comment. can't wear it. Yeah, thanks, Temi. Yeah, and actually, um, we have a message. She drew everything that looks good. Yeah. <laughs> we, we have a message uh, from Temi, who did the uh, who did anything that looks good in Undertale and Deltarune. Including um, that nice door. Yeah, a message uh, for Undertale's birthday. I think we're going to run that now.